What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? This Saturday, Vasily Lomachenko will face Guillermo Regendau inside the squared circle, and two of the best fighters of our generation will put their reputations on the line. Even though they're both southpaws, their styles are polar opposites in almost every way, and each is going to try to draw the other into their kind of fight. So let's take a look at how the Matrix and the Jackal might try to outclass each other. Lomachenko's entire style is built on deception. He keeps his opponents guessing with head movement, feints, and broken rhythm. He prefers to have his opponent shelled up in a tight guard before he gets close, and he uses an insanely high volume of punches to encourage them to do this. He mixes soft, pitter-patter punches in with powerful blows to keep them off guard, and reactive to every punch. He likes to enter into close range by using his jab to trap, push, pull, or frame off of his opponent's arms. This creates openings and lessens the chance of a counter. Once he's in range, Lomachenko moves into the second phase of his attack, sabotage. Lomachenko's goal is to destroy his opponent's balance, vision, and ability to counter. And he often succeeds at inhibiting all three at the same time. He'll pin his opponent's arms in place so they can't counter, pull down their guard to create new openings, use his glove or forearm to keep them in the dark, and frame against their neck to destroy their balance and power. If all goes as planned, his opponent ends up unclear where Lomachenko is, and probably couldn't do anything even if he knew. Once Lomachenko has secured a clear advantage, he will change angles to exit, or pursue a new line of attack. He's even gone so far as to leave his hand in place in front of his opponent's guard so they think he's still there, before attacking from the side, much like a matador does with a bull. But getting close enough to use any of these techniques on Rigandau may prove challenging, to say the least. Rigandau's style is the exact opposite, built around keeping his opponent at arm's length and maintaining a slow, steady tempo. His strategy is to frustrate his opponents until they make a mistake, overcommitting to an attack so that he can land one of his devastating counters. In this way, Rigandau is stylistically similar to Floyd Mayweather, but unlike Mayweather, Rigandau adds to his opponent's sense of urgency by suddenly rushing in with devastating punches that can break their jaws and knock them out cold. The fact Lomachenko is a fellow southpaw somewhat limits the effectiveness of Rigandau's powerful left hand, as Lomachenko's lead arm provides him some protection, just like when two orthodox opponents fight. But Rigandau has had a lot of success going over a southpaw's guard to get at their jaw, or going underneath it to target their liver. If Lomachenko falls victim to one of Rigandau's overpowered punches, the fight could end early. But it's unlikely Lomachenko stays in place long enough to let that happen. He's constantly moving, changing his angle, distance, and head slot almost every single punch. This means that Rigandau's best chance at ending the fight is to set up one of his powerful counters. And he does this by utilizing several lines of defense. He keeps a closed, narrow stance with few openings, and uses his lead arm like a shield, blocking punches with his forearm or elbow. As mentioned before, Lomachenko likes to get inside his opponent's guard and destroy their ability to counter. But this strategy could be poison when it comes to Rigandau, who's known for his counter punches. It will be hard to intimidate Rigandau into shelling up, and if Lomachenko tries to wade in and deflect punches off of his arm, he may find himself the victim of one of Rigandau's guard-splitting uppercuts. Rigandau's balance and speed allow him to find a path through his opponent's guard at angles that would be impossible for most other fighters and Lomachenko has shown himself to be susceptible to well-placed uppercuts before. If Lomachenko can get in deep and avoid getting countered, he still has to deal with Ringendau's upper body movement and pivots. But, this is a far better scenario for Lomachenko than many may think. Like Mayweather, Ringendau likes to lean back, duck, and pivot to change the angle. His low, wide stance allows him to maintain a stable base and hold his guard while his opponent loses their balance. But this technique may turn into a major problem for Ringendau. Lomachenko has shown himself to be very adept at intercepting a retreating opponent, and Rigandau has shown himself to be very susceptible to getting caught in this exact same situation. In this clip, a clever orthodox opponent shifts into southpaw position to follow Rigandau and lands a beautiful knockdown. This also brings up another of Rigandau's defensive problems. While he's fairly close in most ways to Mayweather defensively, he lacks the same expertise in regards to the Philly shell guard. The Philly shell can help beat an opponent to the punch because the hands are already closer to the center line. But it has a particular weakness 
and that it will always leave one giant opening on the opponent's chin or jaw. It requires perfect timing to turn into a more open stance and shield the side of your head while in close range. Rigondeaux has let some big punches get through his guard in this situation before, stunning him and leaving him open to a knockdown just a few seconds later. In this regard, Rigondeaux could be said to be over-reliant on crouching, something Lomachenko would almost certainly take advantage of by framing off of his neck. But if Lomachenko tries to glide in recklessly, he may find his own head pulled down into Rigondeaux's punches. So this fight will most likely be dictated by distance. Assuming Lomachenko can withstand Rigondeaux's powerful but sporadic offense, the fight will hinge on if Lomachenko can get close enough to use his many guard manipulation techniques. But if Rigondeaux can keep Lomachenko at arm's length, forcing him to overcommit so that he can counter, he'll be in total control of the fight. If Lomachenko wants to win, he needs to disguise his movement through feints, draws, and broken rhythm. He may have success changing positions every time Rigondeau gets settled, and attacking him as he turns, like we see Sugar Ray Leonard do here. But Rigondeau is very comfortable pivoting on his punches to follow his opponents, so this is a tall order. Lomachenko may also need to avoid manipulating Rigondeau's lead hand to enter, since Rigondeau uses it to gauge the intentions of his opponents. For Rigondeau's part, if he can keep Lomachenko at arm's length, forcing him to overcommit so he can counter, he'll be in total control of the fight. But to do that, he needs to be able to read Lomachenko's movement, even if he suddenly changes his rhythm and line of attack. In the end, this is anyone's fight to win or lose. We could be looking at 12 technical rounds of boxing, a first round knockout, or an all-out war. But whatever happens, this Saturday we get to see two of the greatest fighters in the world step into the ring and put it all on the line. Not because they need to, but because they can. And in boxing today, that's something truly incredible. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.